All right, uh, guys and gals, um, you guys are asking about my um, workflow for using uh, Mixamo animations, uh, low-res Mixamo animations, upresing them uh, in Houdini uh, for a Sim40 project. Um, so here goes. Uh, so here's a test render that um, I did with it. It's actually I'm actually really liking how it's turning out. This is just look dev, so it's not the final's not going to look like this. But I was just messing around with some lighting and stuff, and and ignore this uh, floating texture for the raindrops here. And I'm pretty sure that there's probably a all Cinema 4D way of doing this, um, but I couldn't figure it out because I'm not really good at um, uh, character animation or any of that stuff or rigging or any of that stuff. Um, and I think the Slack even mentioned that I can use um, a, I think it was a deformer, mesh deformer or something to get it to come back. So my problem was that I had, uh, let me run you through the problem that I had. So um, I was able to, I found this uh, really high poly model that I wanted to animate. Um, and so I got it. Uh, the problem was that um, I wanted to put it into Mixamo and um, get some character animation from it. And so apparently, ignore that train if you can hear it, um, apparently, I, I mean I tried so many times to upload the mesh but Mixamo wouldn't accept it and I finally figured out after reading some forum posts that I think the problem was that the mesh was just too high because this is an, um, a pretty pretty dense mesh. And so we could do it with the volume de with the volume mesher and volume builder in uh, Cinema, but we're just going to bring it into uh, Houdini. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, do a file. So I'm going to file. Okay, and it's going to be a geometry, and what we're going to do is we're going to go look for I go OBJ. So we do that and bring that in. It's going to be OBJ file. Bring that in. And it's a pretty dense mesh, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. There we go. So super dense mesh, right? Okay, what we can do with this is we can probably do a polycap just to close up some of the holes, I think. Um to make sure that it's kind of one completed thing. So you kind of see that there was a, a bit of um geometry that was weird in the shoes and stuff. It's probably open geometry or like open shells or something. Um, I'm gonna change this to triangles. I think triangles would be giving me a better uh, mesh here. If I recall correctly, that's what I did the first time, I think. Okay, and so from there, I'm just gonna do a uh, B to B from polygons. And um, this is basically this, the the same um, concept of doing like a V to B mesher in R20 now. Um, and so I need to up the resolution a little bit. So let's go like 0.01. Let's see if that gives me better resolution. Yes, much better resolution, right? But I'm not really getting too much definition in the hands. And you can tell that because from there you do a B to B convert or convert B to B uh, and take that into there. And you're gonna convert that back into polygons. See, I'm not getting any definition in, in the fingers and I kind of want that definition back. So I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna turn that resolution even lower to like 0.005. Um, and I'm getting it back. So what if I go to like 0.04? That's better. So let's try um, 1.5. I mean, that's okay. You know what, I'm gonna be nitpicky and I'm gonna go, oh, actually also what we could do is you could actually just do a, uh, a, a reshape, not a remesh, a reshape SDF. So when you're making SDF volumes, you can toss this in here and by default, it's going to make it fatter, but you can actually change this dilate to erode and it'll make it thinner. So you get a little more definition in there. So you got a lot of definition in there actually, which means that I could probably bring this back up so that five is probably gonna be okay. You sort of get something like that, which maybe I don't want 25. Sorry, I'm being really nitpicky with these numbers, guys. Um, anyways, you get, the, you get the idea and you can actually do that. Maybe I don't even need it to go that far back in 0.5. Uh, so it eats in on a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, leave it at that, but the mesh is still really, really dense, right? And and so also in um, volume mesher, volume, uh, volume builder and volume mesher, you get this ad adaptivity in Cinema 4D as well. So you can do that here too. So let's just put two and see what we get. And so you see, we still get some, a lot of those details, but the mesh is a lot, a lot um, less dense, right? It's still trying to keep all that detail though. But so you could do something like this. And if I recall, if I take a look at it, I'm getting it down to something like, you know, 11, or 111,000 polygons, which if it was the original, it was something more like 
yeah, a million. Um, so you can go even lower, and it was sort of like a guessing game. Um, and I just try to get it as low as, low as possible, uh, probably even lower than this. I mean, uh, something like that or, or whatever it is. And then you take a look, and now it says it's only uh, 80,000 polygons. So you can what you can do is from there, you can just do a file, uh, and export this out, and just turn this from read to write, I think. And you just write the files out, and you could write a uh, not a BGO but a OBJ uh, out, and that's uh, basically what I did. Uh, and then I brought that OBJ and, I, and imported it in into Mixamo. And so Mixamo, sorry, Mixamo is here. And so here's that here's that decimated version, right? And it finally accepted it because up until then it would just error out, and I never get to this 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 part where the, my character was, was in here. And then from there you can do this regular Mixamo thing where you just pick your and choose whatever you need it to do and and prank pose or whatever whatever it is you need it to do and then you can download your character so when you download your character i would download it with fbx and change the frames per second to whatever i needed in my case it was 24. um and i downloaded it with the skin and it's probably a way to do it without the skin it's probably a lot more straightforward but like like i said i don't really i'm not really familiar with all these things character animation is not my strong suit and so uh with skin and you can just download it and it'll download it as fbx and so what happens with that is then you'll get so so let's just uh, disable this for now then what'll happen is you'll get your FBX file. So this is um, my decimated geometry there, my prepared geometry, but you'll also get these FBX files. And so when you get your FBX file from Mixamo, and you import it, you can import it in and bring it in here. And so I'll show you exactly how everything works in here. And this it was this FBX with skin. So if you when you accept it, uh, make sure, I think I left everything by default here, and you just say import. What happens is it'll import it in and it'll import it as a um, new object on this object level over here. And so here is um, my original, uh, which I decimated to then export out. There, so I prepared it to export it out. And then any second now, any second now, Houdini will do its thing. And so Houdini will bring it in uh, as a subnetwork here. And so you can sort of see the, um, yeah. So you can see it brought it in with the bones and everything and stuff like that. So if I dive into here, and let's just um, hide all the other objects that I'm, so hide other objects. And if I dive into here, you see this crazy network that um, basically Mixamo set up for the rig. Um, and then uh, Houdini was able to read it, read it via, via, via FBX uh, file format. But if you go all over here into this one node that's highlighted, it's the volume, it's called volume measure. And this is actually what you're seeing. So if I turn this off, you're actually not seeing the mesh anymore and you're only seeing the bones. And you can actually dig into this, uh, and you can actually see what it's actually doing. Um, this is the original, so if I, if I hit this one, you're gonna see that this is the original mesh that um, was given to, to uh, Mixamo. So in, essentially, this is the OBJ that I, uh, that I created uh, at this level here, exported out, and I brought it into um, uh, Mixamo, and then Mixamo took that it did its you know rigging and all that stuff like that and then put um put the uh, motions and and um the animation to it and deformed you know deformed the mesh to to get this so that's what it's showing here so i'm going to step back one up to this volume measure again that's in this context here and that's what it's showing and so in order to get that animation back onto this original super dense mesh that we had brought in up here what I'm going to do is, let me do it in another context here. So I'm going to uh, just make in geometry here. So let's do everything in geo, okay? And so uh, I'm going to hide these guys and hide these guys, but we're just going to do everything in geo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an object merge. So if you're familiar, you're probably, you're probably familiar by now. Object merge is um, just a way to reference other other nodes, bring in something from an, a, a different node, um, a node uh, group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in for this one. I'm going to bring in go up here. I'm going to bring in the original file, the original high mesh high res mesh file here. So this is the original. And then this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring in Brutal to Happy Walking, that volume measure. So this is the animation. So this is um, what Mixamo brought in as the animation, or what Mi Mixamo um, exported. And so there's some, um, there there is some deformation here in the armpits, which um, is, is 
the way that Mixamo kind of um, distributed the, the the joints and stuff, and I couldn't get around that uh, uh, at the Mixamo stage. But in Houdini, I was able to fix it. So I'll get, get to that um, after I explain the, the the actual setup with uh, point deform and um, and delta mush. Uh, if you need to go that far, most of, mo I'm guessing you probably if your if your mesh came in fine, then you won't get this deformation. Um, depending on depending on the model that you upload, I think. And so this is the animated version. So this is okay, so this is the original dense mesh. It's just this is the mix mo animated simple mesh. These are getting really long, actually, but whatever. You get the you get the point. And then here, what I'm gonna want is I'm gonna want the um, the uh, simple mesh that was uploaded to uh, Mixamo. And you can get this a number of ways. One way is you can actually just go, it's right, I mean, it's basically what you did here. Or sorry, what you did here, right? It's this last step before you exported it out. It's this last step. Um, so you can reference that, or you could even reference that original within, within that FBX, you brought it in anyway that original um, node also is the same thing. So that this node here within that volume mesh, sorry, I know all the names are all volume measure, so it kind of makes it hard, but if, if you remember correctly, I was explaining that, um, if you can re recall, this is the FBX that I got from Mixamo, and within there, this is the volume measure that it's showing uh, with the animation attached to it, but within that node, here is the original um, OBJ that was uploaded to Mixamo, basically. So if I grab that, and I show this, it's that original, it's this original mesh, right? And so if you take a look at this, this is, uh, this is the dense mesh, and this is the simple mesh, and this is the animation of the simple mesh. And so basically what point deform does is it wants a mesh deform, which is this guy. It wants a rest point. So this is the resting point of it, and it wants the deform point lattice, so basically the animation. So now you, if you give it these three things, what's gonna happen is it will, see? It will bring and it will apply this animation based off of, it makes a reference of the dense mesh off of the simple mesh's rest uh, form, and it will apply that, that animation to it, which is exactly what we wanted. So if you take a look, I mean, sorry, the mesh is a little dense, but you can actually see that it's doing the walk, which is great. And so basically, that's that's all you need to do. Um, and if if that looks fine to you, then then that's great. If you still see some deformities and you need a little bit of um, help getting it back to you know a less deformed version, what you can do is use Delta Mush. And what Delta Mush does is it gets the deformed geometry, but it wants to actually get the original reference geometry, and it tries to keep the reference geometry, the original. Uh, the original um, form of it in mind, and it tries to then, but still apply the uh, animation. So if you do this, but tell it that the original mesh was this, it tries to sort of relax things. And so if let's take a look at an AB of that. So we get a little bit of relaxation, and you can actually, I think, turn these up. So it's time to step size up. You can actually see that it's actually relaxing that we can't go more than that I think it's sort of trying to relax it a little bit and you sort of see that it's um, kind of relaxing those armpits but you're also getting a lot of these other deformations in the other parts that might not be wanted so uh, in the next section if, if you're if that's what you're experiencing um, I'll show you how to sort of selectively apply a delta mush to certain parts um, but before that, we can actually, instead of putting the delta mush after the point deform, we could see if it helps out by putting a delta mush before the point deform. So in order for to do that, if you put a delta mush um, and place that delta mush on the, the point being that, the point being is, with that same concept in mind, um, think, about, think about these two states as being these two states here. So if this is the original animation from this, so the animated version of this 
mesh, and this mesh doesn't have the deformations in the armpits. If you say that the required deformed geometry is this guy, and you say that the original rest point, the reference point you want to do is this guy, you might be able to get less of that armpit deformation before you apply. So then you can, so be before you apply the point deform. So what you can do there is actually turn these step size up to three, and you see that it's um, relaxing that, and you make this maybe 30. So you see that's sort of relaxing that better, you know? Uh, 50. And now, for this point deform, instead of giving it this animation, since this animation kind of has the, the weird armpits, this animation has the sort of less weirdo armpits. You can actually see what happens if you port this animation into this node instead. And what happens with that is you get less, uh, you get a little, a little less um, deformation on the armpits there. So you can do a sort of a before after to see how much of a difference that makes. So without that uh, delta mush helping, and with that delta mush helping kind of helps it out a little bit. Um, I, and, and if you want even more control over that, because the more you push the delta mush, if you take a look, the more you push that delta mush, put a hundred. So we could keep going with that and make it a thousand, see what that does. Um, it kind of starts messing things up. To see the armpits are like much, much better, but um, the rest of the mesh is kind of getting messed up. And so ideally what would be nice is if you could just apply this delta mush uh, amount just to the armpit area. And so actually um, that's what I'll show you next. Uh, it gets a little bit more complicated because you kind of have to select select out the armpit areas. Um, so for beginning beginner Houdini users, it might be a little complicated, but it's a great technique um, in order to uh, put an attribute onto that those values and just have something affect certain area.